Hey everyone, today on the bench I have a demonstration. Today's demonstration is about scoping your supply rails. I thought this would be a good video to do because I've not really done a video on it, though I did talk about it in a video when I was working on designing the uh, JAT501 amp. You know, these amps are made of smaller building blocks. One of the building blocks was a current source. And I was, you know, running some tests on it, putting square waves on the current source to see how it behaves, see if it was stable or not. I was getting some ringing on the square waves, as I recall, and I was thinking, well, we have a problem here. But when I scoped across the supply rails feeding the current source, well, that ring was on the power supply rails. So when I fixed that, it behaved fine. There was no problem. Now, scoping your rails, of course, is not limited to audio amplifiers or really any linear circuit. It also applies to digital. Very important that the power feeding your digital circuits is clean as well because that can cause really major problems. Digital has very fast switching square waves and that can generate a lot of noise on the supply rails. But being an audio electronics type channel, I want to cover mainly uh, like an audio amplifier circuit. And that's what I set up here, just a simple LM386. Purposely made the circuit laid out pretty bad. You know, it, being on a socket board like this, they have their own issues. But even if you laid it out poorly on a printed circuit board, you could still have issues with oscillation and such. And that was another problem with the JAT501, if you followed that series, I had a problem with the output stage oscillating at like 40 megahertz. It was, you know, very small, just a few millivolts of oscillation, but it was there. And, you know, the supply bypass caps are pretty close to the outputs. But with these faster output transistors, I had to bypass the supply closer to the output transistors and then I had to bring grounds out, a much better ground out because I needed to go from the supply rail to ground with these capacitors. But once I got that straightened out it was working much better. One reason I'm doing this video is because somebody was asking me. You know, I'm building these amplifier circuits and they oscillate all the time. And I assume, you know, he's checked everything, make sure it's following the schematic properly and all that. You know, checking your voltage at certain nodes around the circuit to make sure they're correct. Yet, the circuit oscillates. Actually, in his case, he had some distortion, not really oscillation. So why is it doing this? Well, one thing you have to do, after you check everything else, you want to check your supply rails. Matter of fact, I would probably check the supply rails first you know if the circuits working but just has distortion it, it might just be junk on the supply rails a lot of people do not think to check the supply rails it's very important with electronics to do so okay so i have a simple schematic of an lm386 amplifier now this is really not the proper circuit i would use i made a video called the lm386 done right has a proper schematic but this is more for demonstrative purposes here so if you're having a distortion issue you know, a lot of people don't know to scope across the rails but if they do know are they scoping across the rails in the correct positions you might say well yeah i scoped across the supply bypass capacitor you know that that's this capacitor that goes from the supply rail to ground well if you scope across that it might look fine. You may not have much noise or any noise. You have to scope at different positions because the traces in the circuit, they do have re some resistance and inductance. Well, there's capacitance involved as well. You know, for example, you don't want to lay the output line here close to the input because they could capacitively couple together and cause distortion or oscillation but that's kind of beyond the scope of this video we're mainly talking about scoping the supply rails so I marked 
the probing or scoping positions with A and then a sub number like A1 and A2 right across the supply rails. Well, you should be scoping at other positions. Like it's actually better to scope across these pins here where the supply and the ground enter the chip. And on a bipolar type supply amp, that could be the positive and negative supply. So that's important too because, you know, like I say, there's resistance and inductance in these lines here in the traces or wires. That could cause a small amount of signal voltage to appear at places of the amp where you don't want it to. One good example is the output signal here. You know, that's a fairly high current relative to the input. And if that speaker return connects to the ground here, for example, let's say you connected this over here, well, there's quite a bit of distance from this input ground line and the bypass capacitor. So a small amount of signal can appear on the input from the output and cause oscillation. Also the ground pin of the chip as well because that ground internally feeds the input stage. Okay, so now I'm going to power up this little demonstration circuit and we'll see what kind of problem it has. Okay, I got my YouTube safe music here. Let's uh, listen. Okay. That sounds pretty terrible, doesn't it? Well, everything's hooked up just like the schematic. So what's the problem? Now we're getting some sort of distortion from somewhere. So what I'm going to do is hook up the oscilloscope and we'll see what's going on. Okay, we have the scope hooked up here. And so I don't have to talk over music, I put a resistor across the output. 8 ohm resistor packed as our load. So let's scope across the load, see what we're getting. Now I'm playing that piano music again, but look what's happening. This is unusual. It's like there's a oscillation on the negative side of the signal. So let's turn that up to a much higher level. And then we'll scope across the bypass capacitor, which is not really the best place, but just to demonstrate. Okay. I'm getting a little bit of signal. Now it is normal to get some low frequency content because the supply is, you know, the, uh, the supply voltage will sag a little bit due to the load. But I'm not seeing any of that high frequency oscillation. A better place would be to scope across the pins of the chip. I should say the power supply pin. So connect to the ground and to the positive supply. Look at that. There's that high frequency content and it's pretty bad. That should not be there. So it's kind of a feedback issue through the supply pins. Now it may not be obvious, but you can also scope across the ground. You know, see what kind of signal is developing at different places along the ground. So let's do that. So I'll go from the ground pin of the chip to where it connects to the socket board. And look at that. That shows you how bad these socket boards can be. I mean, I'm going, see if I can get the pencil here, right from the pin to the, this pin here. So it's right next to it. It's that same line there. That's all one connection. So there's resistance between the ground pin and here. That just shows you, at least with these socket boards, that the connection resistance can be bad enough, especially if these boards are used a lot. They kind of get grunge in the pins and oxidation, whatever, and make a bad connection. So let's go from one of these jumpers 
Well, this connection, it doesn't show as much oscillation, but it's showing a negative going pulse. And again, it demonstrates how bad the connection is. Okay, I'm testing the amplifier now with the 10 kilohertz square wave. I want to see what's going on here. And yeah, you can see a pretty strong overshoot and some ringing with the uh, negative side here, the square wave. I want to make sure I'm not clipping. Okay, here's across the supply bypass cap, and it's nothing really much there. Let me make sure I have the uh, scope turned up enough, the signal level. So now I'm scooping across the supply rails right at the amplifier chip pins. 200 millivolts per division. So yeah, that that's uh, this is RMS, so we want to see the peak. And you know, that's... Uh, quite a bit there probably like 300 millivolts across there here's another thing to look at I'm bonding this side and this side these grounds together with these jumpers and uh, just scoping across those see what we get and look at that garbage a little oscillation showing up let's turn that up a little bit I gotta adjust the uh, trigger point yeah there we go that could be the bottom it it could be the polarity of the offset because there's some inductance and resistance between those two ground connection points so that goes to show you especially on these socket boards and again even on a printed circuit board if it's not laid out very well that we're getting noise across the supply rails and even different parts of the ground so what I need to do is let me set the circuit up better, or at least as good as I can get on a socket board, and see if I can clean that up. Okay, I rearranged the circuit. I brought all of the grounds over to this one line over here. Got rid of this big, long ground. You know, I was, had the input connected over here. I mean, it's ground, and it came over here. So I got rid of all of that. I brought all, like I say, everything to a star point, as they, they call it, a star ground. Keep in mind, though, there still are connection issues with the socket board. There's still resistance with the connections. But anyhow, let's see what it looks like now. Okay, I'm scoping across the output. And we got rid of that huge overshoot and that oscillation. There is still a overshoot here that could be, you know, just the limitations of the socket board. It could be a thing with this chip itself. You know, it's not really a hi-fi amplifier. But, you know, besides that, it's a pretty nice looking square wave, 10 kilohertz. Now let's check across the supply rails now. Okay, I changed the scope to 100 millivolts per division for more sensitivity and I'm connecting right to the pins of the chip and you can see a little bit of blip but you don't see any oscillations or anything bad if I had the room I could put a film capacitor and probably get rid of those blips as well okay so I hooked the speaker back up and the music source and let's see what it sounds like surprise 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 shouldn't be much of a surprise that if you set the circuit up correctly you'll get better results so again I uh, just use the star ground and uh, I don't think I mentioned before but this bypass cap is across the supply pins as close as I can plug it into the socket board it looks a little more cluttered it doesn't look as nice but electrically, it's much better that way. Certainly, there's still connection issues with the socket board. If I laid this out and made up a printed circuit board, I can do even better. 
also bypass with an additional film cap across the supply. You know, it can do even better still, but you know, this is about as good as I can do here on the socket board. Now in closing, I'll mention a few more things about supply bypassing. This is your bank of supply bypass capacitors. In some cases you'll need as many as three different types because capacitors have inductance and they may not have low impedance at higher frequencies, especially electrolytics, and you'll have to add like a film capacitor, in some cases a ceramic capacitor as well, to cover the full frequency range of signals that could potentially end up on your supply rails. And at that point, you connect your power supply, and each part of the circuit should have its own connection to this bank of capacitors because for example if this is an output stage to an amplifier for example and you also connect the input stage here well the inductance and resistance of this trace on the circuit board will allow some signal to appear at this point which could appear on your the input stage of your amp so that's why the input stage has its own separate connection to the supply rails and that's true on the positive side and the negative or ground side as some amps are bipolar you know they have a positive and a negative supply rail well that's going to wrap it up for this video hope it was of some use to you and i thank you for watching